You guys, I just want to make a quick and an informative video about why grip training is fantastic. Today, I attempted 545 double overhand conventional deadlift, and I failed. Twice! I actually failed. Maybe I failed twice. Before I dropped down to 525 for a PR. And I figured I got the 5... Nature's Bakery, Fig Bars. I got the 5... 45 to my knees, so the 525 would be so easy. And I couldn't do it. You see, once your grip is taxed, it's taxed. If you can't grip it, you can't lift it. I don't know why I'm being on camera either. It's, I'm sure it's some of you guys' pet peeves. Pet peeves. Pet peeves. Kitty! Anyways, but that goes to show how important your grip is. I almost got 545, but my grip was taxed, so I couldn't even do 525. I'll think about that for a second. If your grip is shot, you won't be able to lift uh, an insignificant weight. So I tried, and I tried, and I was like, well, I started getting desperate for a PR. And I said, well, I didn't get 545. I deleted the clip because I wanted to save the memory on my phone just in case, because I figured I was going to hit a PR anyways. But I didn't get 525 after failing six times or so like that. So then I dropped down to 500, and I was like, I was just going to wrap this puppy out. And at that point, I couldn't even do 500 anymore. I was so shot. Then I was desperate, guys. Now we're treading into deep waters. So I didn't know what to do from here. So I figured I would go to the fat grips, fat grips, the blue fat grips, maybe get a PR with that. So I tried 365, and that's what I uploaded, just so you guys can see it. And that was... I believe the third time. That was my third attempt there. Every attempt was very similar to that rep. Well, now I was freaking out. Freaking out, because I hate ending my day without making any progress. So then I threw on the Fat Grips Extreme. And that, I think, was the second or third attempt. And I got it, and I held it for a nice amount of time at the top. And then I was pumped. I was like, I got a PR. But I was so amped and in the zone and like brain dead, all of my energy was in my grip, right? So then I did the math wrong. I thought I had a five pound PR there. It turned out I matched my previous PR. But if we add up all the factors here, guys, it's not a bad day. Not a bad day at all. And that's what I'm getting at in terms of the beauty of grip training. There are no bad days with grip training because in my experience so far, and I haven't been doing tons of it, so I can't speak for people that do like hours of grip alone. You know, I do one exercise and I call it. But I have really don't have any problems recovering on a day-to-day -day basis. So ultimately, I got a ton of volume in. I got high intensity, right? I held 545 for like a partial rep. I held 525 for three partial reps. I held 500 for a partial rep. I did 365 with the fat grips for a couple partial reps. And I did, I did 287 or 285, 287, considering if you add the fat grips extremes or not to the weight. But then I did that and I held that. So that ended up being a ton of volume that I got in today. If you look at it that way, it was actually a better day than yesterday, for instance, where I just warmed up to 520. I hit it and I called it a day. In terms of feeling stronger yesterday... Sure, I felt stronger, but today I actually had a better overall workout that will contribute to greater strength down the road. So, something to think about when you guys train. Now, you can't, of course, if you're doing this for like heavy maxing out deadlifts and bench press and squats, it's not going to end well. Like failed reps are just going to break you down and most likely injure you. But grip training, just remember, there are no bad days. It's even if you pick something up a couple inches off the ground, your grip is still firing like crazy if it's a challenging weight. It's like doing the rolling thunder, for instance. You're only picking it up a couple inches. So, just wanted to get that out to you guys. And then, um, you know, I don't want to preach for my soapbox or anything, but 
I think it is important that a lot of you guys go into your workout with the mindset that I will hit a PR in one way or another. Like after I failed 545, I was like, okay, I can still hit a PR. And then I failed 525, and that's when I started to get almost like psychosis or whatever, like getting crazy, anxiety, like want to hit a PR more than you want to breathe, as cheesy as that is. But do you guys understand what I'm saying? Just that drive to put put that pressure on yourself that you can't leave the gym until you want up something. And that's why I changed from just a double overhand deadlift to the axle deadlift to the ultra thick axle deadlift. There's got to be something. So it depends on what you're doing, whether you're training grip, maybe just change the diameter of the grip to hit a PR in one way or another. If you're training back or like deadlift and you don't hit an awesome deadlift, then, I mean, your, your traps and your lats and your grip and all that is fired up, so why not utilize that to hit a PR with pull-ups or bent over rows or something along those lines? I've also noticed that with, like, bench, for instance. If you don't hit a huge, like, a, a bench PR, well, you're still pretty fired up. Maybe you can hit a PR with dips. Maybe you can hit a PR with dumbbells. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's almost common sense, but a lot of people don't look at it that way in terms of a workout. Most people just work out as... Um, you have a basic program or they just go in there with instinct and you just do this exercise and that exercise. But are you really bettering yourself? I mean, sure, you're getting some volume in. But how do you have any idea that you're getting stronger or you're getting better? So what I'm saying is not only going to ensure that you're getting stronger in one way or another, but then all of a sudden it's making you mentally stronger as well. Now you have a totally different mindset every time you go to the gym. And that's what's going to make you superior to everybody else in your gym in your school, on your team, because you have a winner's mindset now. You don't have a mindset that I'm just going to go and get a workout in because it's my fitness and blah, blah, blah. You're going to better yourself and to break your barriers each and every single day. And no matter what, you're going to get that next step.